What's up everyone and welcome back to my channel As I mentioned from my previous video In this episode we will be making mac animal So it's macaron in the shape of an animal And the animal is Escargo. So it's one of the famous animal in France. They even have it on their table as one of their famous cuisine and I tasted it. It's so good. But we are not talking about the escargo. We are talking about the macaron. So the difficulty level for this episode is medium and to me this is one of the difficult baking i have ever done we are going to make macaron you can find out from my previous episode where i make my 1k subscribers cake and it made me three trials to achieve the perfect macaron and to me this time is gonna be another challenge because not every baking of macaron is going to be perfect until we really practice it every time as a baker so we are going to do this together achieving the macaron mac animal escago aka mr snail <laughs> so the first thing we need to prepare is the blackcurrant and blueberry confit it's one of the easiest um, preparation for this recipe so what we need is to prepare the ingredients of course right over here For the blackcurrant and the blueberry confit, I made it a day earlier because we need to let it rest in the fridge for about 4 hours. Of course, you can make it on the day itself as well. So here's the first thing we need to do. Mix the sugar and the pectin together and then leave it aside at the moment. And then we are going to pour the purees, the blackcurrant and the blueberry into a saucepan together with the lemon juice and the 20 gram of the sugar and then we are going to heat up our purees together with the lemon juice and the 20 gram of sugar while our purees is on the fire we are going to add the mixed pectin and sugar and then constantly mixing it stirring it around and then leave it to boil for about 10 seconds And then after that, we are going to transfer it into a bowl and then cover it with a cling film and keep it in the fridge for about 4 hours. And now, the fun part, making the shell of the macaron. It's going to be a challenge, but if we follow the instruction properly, I'm very sure that we are going to achieve this together. So for the shell of the macaron, here are the ingredients that we are going to need. For this, I strongly recommend to make sure that you measure the way of the um, every ingredients correctly because measurement is very very important in making the shell of the macaron. Make sure you have a kitchen scale at home and also I would recommend to have a thermometer in your kitchen because the preparation of the meringue I would say is very important to play with the temperature in order for us to achieve the perfect shell of the macaron. So the first thing we need to do is to sieve the almond flour together with the icing sugar in a large ball and then after we sieve them we are going to add the first egg white into this powder mixture mix it using your spatula until everything is well incorporated Then you can also add the brown coloring into your mixture. So for the meringue, this one we are going to beat the second white egg until it's fluffy. And in the meantime, we are going to heat the water together with the sugar until it reaches at 115 degrees Celsius. And then once it achieved at 118 degrees Celsius, we are going to add this little by little into the 
fluffy white egg that has been beaten. While adding the sugar syrup, we are going to beat the white egg continuously, beating it using a high speed until all of the sugar syrup is full inside the white eggs. We are going to continue beating it for about 2 minutes using a medium uh, speed until the meringue is cooled down. Once we finish mixing this, we are going to add this into our first mixture and then mixing them using our spatula. So this part is one of the most important part that we need to make sure that we are folding it properly, eyeing on the texture of the macaron batter and then using a folding method is one of the best way because by this we are controlling the mixing of the batter so that we do not over batter it or under batter it. Because if we over batter it then we are going to end up a very very thin macaron. It will spread so much we might not have fit even when we bake it in the oven or if we under mix it it might crack and so on and so forth. So making sure that we stop at the right texture is very important. So as I can show you right here, when our batter achieves at this texture, which is like a ribbon texture, then you can stop. You can also try to draw it in an eighth shape. If it doesn't break, it means it's ready. Another way you can test is just pour some of the batter on a piece of um, baking paper. If it's spread too much, then we know that it's already over mixed. And if we under mix it, when we pour a dollop on the baking paper, then the point top doesn't go down, means we still need to mix it more. So this is the piping tips that I'm using. It's a large nozzle round piping tip. I think this is called as number 10. So once all of it are ready, we are going to transfer this into a piping bag. At this point of time, you should already preheat your oven at 150 degrees Celsius. But if your oven is a type that gets too hot so easily, so you might need to reduce it at 140 to maybe around 135 degrees Celsius. And then make sure that you preheat it for about half an hour before because we want to make sure that the heat around the oven is well distributed. So right here, it's so easy. We're just going to pipe on top of this silicone sheet according to the size. Once all of these are piped on top of the tray, I'm just going to leave this for about half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour. Sometimes it might take longer depending on the environment. Why? Because we are going to wait it to form the skin. While waiting for the skin to form, I'm going to keep an eye on the macarons, see if there is any air bubble, and using my toothpick to poke the bubbles around the, uh, the macarons. And once the skin is formed, we are going to bake this for 12 minutes. And here's the tips from the book. At 8 minutes, we are going to open the oven just to release the steam and close it back and then do the same thing at 10 minutes. And then, wait until the 12 minutes, take it out from the oven and leave it to rest. The last thing we need to prepare is the chestnut cream. This one is also easy to prepare, but we need these ingredients first. So the first thing we need to do is to heat up our chestnut puree in the microwave for just about 30 seconds just to let it to melt slightly. 
And then after that, we are going to add the chestnut cream along with the rum. So the recipe actually called for a dark rum, but I can't find it in the store. There is, but it's so big and I don't need a lot of it. So I just bought a rum flavor. If you have rum at home, use that one uh, for about 4 gram. After this, we are going to leave this aside first and we are going to beat the softened butter until it's creamy. Once it's all creamy, adding the mixture of our chestnut and mix this thoroughly. And we have our chestnut cream. So now we have reached to the assembly. <laughs> so for the assembly part, very easy. We're just going to transfer our chestnut cream along with our blueberry and blackcurrant confit into a piping bag. And now we are ready to put this all together. So I'm just gonna paint the spiral of the snail. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's not really that perfect actually, right? But according to the book, the spiral is actually baked together with the macaron. But I have a few trials that making the spiral using the dough of the macaron it doesn't really work and it damages my macaron so I do not suggest to make two different batches and then pipe on top of the first batch of the macaron that has been piped on the baking mat this is the best way if you would like to achieve the snail uh, effect but of course you can skip this and can just enjoy as it is So I'm gonna keep them in the fridge first because I wanna make it slightly firmer because I want to make it into a real snail together with some almond paste. So let's start decorating it. <laughs> so right here I have the almond paste. I'm gonna show it much closer right over here. So this is how it looks like. In Singapore, I'm not sure where you can get other than in the French uh, grocery website at Le Petit Depot. So very simple, we are just going to mix the almond paste together with the brown food colouring. And then we're going to roll it into a tiny snake kind of uh, shape. Finally, it's done. I am so happy and so glad that it turned out so well. Although, behind the scene, I did a few trials. I think three trials to achieve this perfection. And you see, persistence brings you the best results. <laughs> it looks good. It looks cute. And I really can't wait to try it. So let's try it now.
this is by far the best flavor of macaron I ever tasted but really I'm not just saying because I like it but I mean I made it yes but this is really good the rum inside the chestnut cream just brings out the flavor of the chestnut without overpowering and also the blueberry and the black currant confit really plays together with the chestnut I was having a doubt that it will taste good together but this flavor is the best pairing ever I really really recommend to try this recipe because your mouth will be very happy and the flavor won't fail you definitely <laughs> even you can use this for other desserts like sponge cake added together with the confit and the uh, chestnut cream you can use it in your um, cake roll you can use it for anything but this flavor together is just beautiful And to that, we have reached to the end of the video. Thank you so much for baking with me, watching me, making this cute dessert. This is the cutest dessert I ever made and it turned out well. Make this for your next birthday party, children party, first birthday for our toddler and it will be really a crowd pleaser together with the flavor. And the next episode, we will be baking da -da 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 -da, Milfoy. And everybody knows this is one of the most difficult pastry to make by the French milfoy means it's like a layer of sheets but according to the book the difficulty level is medium so let's hope it's really doable <laughs> and of course I can't wait to bake again with everyone out there and once again thank you so much for watching I really hope you enjoy baking with me as I enjoy making our cute escargot <laughs> don't forget to click the subscribe button hit the like button and share this with everyone who loves watching baking or even want to bake or even someone who likes to watch French pastry <laughs> and if you're still watching on to the next episode